Good morning. My name's Paul Church from Clarity here in the UK. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. Um, I can see we have Clive already in the room over on our YouTube page. So good morning, Clive. Um, I can see the eyes are coming in now and we'll wait for a few more chats. Mo's normally next in the chat window. So I wonder whether Mo's going to be the next one along. How's everybody doing? There we go. Good morning, Mo. Um, all good, thank you. That should be my all clear from Sue. Sound is clear. The lovely Sue is in the room with you as well. Um, there we have the lovely Bernie, Alison. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. That was a bit back to front, wasn't it? What's the weather like with everybody today? It's um, sort of very windy down here in Edenbridge in Kent. And I believe it's probably, well, I believe, according to the weather reports, I think it's windy all round, isn't it? Um, so um, who else have got? We've got lovely Jane in the room, Josie, good morning. Morning, Colin as well. Uh, Anja, Helen, Pat, Patricia, a little blowy. Cloudy and calm at the moment in Ripon. Raining with Josie Higgins. Blustery and bleak, says Sue downstairs. <laughs> it's, it's probably a bit more blustery up here on the on the first floor at Clarity Towers. Um, so I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's staying safe. It's very windy in Somerset. Um, Joan is multitasking. She's watching whilst working. Ha ha ha. <laughs> um, so it's lovely to have your company once again. Um, hope everybody's well. And um, looking forward to the next hour. Got some sneaky peeks coming up for you as well. And also some back in stock information. So um, did anybody from the US, so Mo's just asking, did anybody watch the clip yesterday in the USA? Um, let me just get rid of that little pop-up while, while that's appearing. Get rid of that one. Um, windy in North Cornwall. Yeah, here we go. Everybody's coming in. Pull up a chair. Close the doors. Close the windows. Maybe draw the curtains. Don't need to worry what's going on outside, do we? So, um, oh, Jill's got it all going on this morning. She's got drizzling, sunny, windy in the Berkshire Downs, but the lilac below her window is burst into flowers, so that's a bonus. There we go. So, um, yeah, lots to, to talk to you about this week, um, and we're going to continue on using um, Jane Nesterenko's lovely floral sampler plate. We're going to build up our levels of white work, and um, yeah, really looking forward to today. This is my sort of downtime every week. Um, for an hour or so. So while everyone's putting up a chair, should we have a look at what we've been looking at um, over the past few weeks? So this is the lovely Jane Nesterenko A4 floral sampler. Great while, um, designs and um, plate for learning all your different techniques, from your colouring in, to your white work, to your shading, and just exquisite pieces of artwork that will carry you throughout the year, spring, season, autumn, winter, um, really, really nice. And we can just take elements of it, we can use the squares as formations for other designs that we have in our stash as well. Um, I wonder whether Mr. Ken is um, loitering in that country lane again today. <laughs> I know he's probably definitely um, struggling with his signal today if it's that windy. Um, and we're, we're taking our inspiration from a piece of artwork that Karen Jackson has created. So I thought this was a really lovely way of sort of lovely way of learning the lovely white work skills and just building up. Um, I've got to stop saying um, the different layers of white work. And as with what well, I've explained previously, it's one of those processes where you have to learn to be patient. And if you learn to be patient when you're working with the white work process, then it definitely pays dividends. So, um, so yeah, so, and it is, this is a perfect opportunity that we can go back and we can look at and um, 
Um, there he goes again. I've got to stop it. <laughs> the more I know that I'm saying it, the more I'm saying it, if that makes sense. Let me have a slurp of coffee. So, very hot. Very, very hot. So, who was in the shack with Barb yesterday? Those lovely fashion characters. They were amazing. Sort of just a, a sort of a squiggle, and all of a sudden, depending how thin or how wide the squiggles were, depends on sort of like the, the shape of the body, the tone of the body, um, the little legs, the arms, the poses, the, the hats, the fascinators. So clever how you can just take. And last Thursday, I mean, Gracie does the uh, the Thursday evenings with Barb um, from New York. And I always watch it back on the, the Friday morning. And those little blobs of paint, and all of a sudden how those blobs of paint turn into characters just by putting a little head on, a little leg, a little fit, and the little dog. Really, really clever. So if you missed out, it keeps popping up. I don't know why it's popping up. Anyway, I'll ignore it. It's amazing how the imagination can work, isn't it? When you look at something, and, and if I suppose if you'd looked at those blobs of, of colour, you wouldn't have thought that that's what they would turn out to be. And it's the same with the lovely squiggles, that you can take that lovely filigree squiggle and turn it into, um, I know Barb did it as a, a tree one year, but just sort of building up the designs uh, and changing, whether you go thin at the top, go out, come in, so, and then just introducing that little line just to give it the shape of the body. So clever. Anyway, so let's have a look at what we've been doing over the past few weeks. We've got plenty of people in the room this morning. We've got 85 of you. Good morning. Hope it's not too crowded. So let's have a look where we've been going. So if I bring in my piece of artwork that I've been working, I'm going to zoom in now. I'm going to pop that next to it. Let's just pop this to, to one side. Which way? Oh, that wind is really, I can hear, can you hear that wind howling outside? <laughs> oh, goodness me. So what we started off doing was we took the dahlia, from the design plate, and we traced it out with the various different size tools. So we start off with the number one, the number two, and then the number three, and the number four. And for those of our friends that are familiar with the Groovy system, the Groovy tools have different size balls on the end of them. And the larger the ball, it doesn't press into the groove as much on our Groovy plate. So therefore, what happens as we're tracing out our design, then we get lighter line art. So this one was done with the number one, which is one that I tend to go for generally if I'm tracing out and introducing color. Then we have the, the number two tool to give us a softer line. Then the number three, and depending on the design or your, not the design, depending on your eyesight and your light in the room, then um, then you could go with the number four. But we can see here it's very, very faint. Okay. And then, so this is looking at it from the front. And then on the back, we've started to introduce various layers of white work. And so far, we've done two layers with the six mil ball tool which is the larg largest, the largest of the um, Pergamano tools. Then we also did two layers using the 4.5, which is back in stock. And now what we're going to do, we're going to drop down for today's session, and we're going to go for the free meal ball tool. So for those of our friends at home that are sort of going on that bus journey, as Barb describes it, and you're, you 
you're more you're comfortable using the wooden tools then maybe this is a, a perfect opportunity to have a look at taking it to that next step i wouldn't say next level but it's that sort of next level of progression if you're into if you're getting to real, really get into grips with your white work and it sort of ties in with a little party we're having over on the pergamano.com website who knows about the pergamano party come on hands up if you do if you sign up to our e-shots that we send out to you telling you about our tv shows um, if you're on our social media pages so you're on clarity worldwide groovy worldwide pergamano worldwide then you'll know that yesterday we kicked off a pergamano party with up to 75 percent of selected products over there now it is a separate website to the clarity craft website so but obviously we own Pergamano and Pergamano has that fantastic sort of international brand and is very popular in um, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, the States and it was established worldwide. So when we purchased Pergamano, we purchased the brand, we purchased the website but the website still stands alone in its own right. So we thought because we're starting to get some of the tools back in stock and because it's April, why not have a party? So if you belong to the Clarity Craft Clubs, your discount doesn't work over there because it is a, a separate, I think the way Barb described it, Clarity Stamp is sort of like a, a department store and what Pergamano is like a concession. So if you went into... I was going to say um, Debenhams, but they don't exist anymore. But, but sort of like a Debenhams, and you go in there and you've got all your different brands in there, your Molten Browns and, and stuff like that. But you can't use your sort of loyalty card. If you had a loyalty card for Molten Brown, for example, you can't use that in Debenhams, but you can use it in Molten Brown Shop. So, um, so yes, yeah, so there's up to 75% on some items on the website. It's like a daily deal going on. And then it's um, 30%, I think 30% off on all of the Pergamano tools. So, uh, so it's a perfect opportunity if you, maybe you think, oh, in a month's time, I'll be ready to, to step it up a little bit. Um, what did Helen say? I'm saying, unfortunately, the gift, gift cards don't work either. It's the same sort of process, isn't it? But it didn't stop Helen from buying. <laughs> So, um, so you know, I'm just going to sort of digress slightly. Just let me just show you. I've got my iPad with me today. And um, I thought we'd just have a little delve into the Pergamano website. Hopefully I've got enough chuff in here to bring that in. I'm sure that should be charging. Is it charging? Let me just unplug, plug it back in. It was charging earlier. I've probably got a duff extension lead. No, nope, there we go. It's, it's chuffing. It's charging. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in on the, the overhead just so we can have a look. So let me just zoom in. And we're going to come in. Oh, that's what I go on the overhead, doesn't it? So let's have a look. Okay. So Pergamino Party. And then you can scroll down, we've got Groovy Tuesday. We've got our tools, we've got the multi-needle, we've got accessories, we've got designs from Tina, Inspiration Gallery. Now the Inspiration Gallery, we're in a process of going through and revamping that. But for example, if I go in there, like so, if it's gonna load for me, there we go. You see, we've started to, to build the inspiration gallery. So you've got the lovely perforating tools there. Let's have a look. If we go into to this one, this is quite clever. He says, I was in here earlier. Come on. It's my internet connection in here. Still loading. 
still know it's like watching paint dry. It's because I'm in this room and it's got um, soundproof on there. Let's try the next one. There we go. So, for example, you've got some lovely pieces. But see how those little dots appear? If I click on that, it tells me what it is has been used. So we've got clear parchment, we've got Pico V tool or the ankle tool on there. So we're sort of building up and we're going to start over the coming months, build up that. But if I go to, let's go back up to, if I put um, embossing tools, search, there we go. So We've got various different tools in there. So look, six mil Pergamano tool. Super duper price. Isn't that good? So what you need to do is head over to the Pergamano.com website um, and take advantage of that Pergamano party. Right. We'll have a look at something else in a minute on there. Okay, so maybe you want to go for the pink map. Just saying. Okay, <laughs> so we've looked at the six mil ball tool. We've looked at the 4.5, and we're now going to look at the three mil ball tool. And what we've been doing, we've been slowly building up, and I've been keeping a little um, ready reckoner of how many layers I put on. Now for this layer, what I'm going to do, I'm definitely going to bring in, when it comes to white bear, for me, this is my best friend. This is my safety net, so to speak. So I'm going to pop that down on my workspace. And then we're going to bring that in. And I'm going to take my groovy guard. And I put a little pencil mark here to show that this is where I need to start every time. And what I'm doing is I'm working in a clockwise direction. So I start here, work all the way around, and then I can mark off to say I've done a layer. So let's start with the number one traced out image first. Okay, got my glasses back with my new lenses. Ooh, goodness me, that's much better. And all we're doing is we're just gently flicking. So I'm starting at the tip of the petal. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Okay. I'll get used to these glasses as well. Zoom in. Bring that down a little bit. There we go. How much is it on the Pergamano website, Sue? $13.99. Mm. And, oh, what I forgot to mention, <laughs> which is a, sort of like a Brucey bonus. Hang on. Let me put this side to one side. If, as, as it's a party, normally you'd go to a party and you'd bring a gift. But if you come to our Pergamano party, we give you a gift. So designed by the lovely Jazz, these are our lovely baby plates. So if you spend £40, then we'll automatically pop this in your basket when we're packing your order. And... If you spend £60 in one transaction, you'll get both. So we've got let's celebrate and it's party time. So £40 in one transaction and you'll get this one for free. We'll just pop it in your package. And if you spend £60, then you'll get both of them. Aren't they clever? Jazz, her artwork is beautiful. And I had an email just from Jane just from Jane, an email just, I had an email from Jay just before I came into the studio to set up um, that these would be fantastic um, background plates. So I'll, um, I'll have a little word with Jazz later. So um, yeah, so two free plates and there were $5.99 each. So Brucey bonus, come and join the party. Okay, put my glasses, goggles back on. <laughs> okay, right. So, number three mil bottle, and we're just 
sticking inwards. Can you see the difference? Yeah, you can, can't you? Start to see the difference. Because we've let it rest, I mean, this is, for me, this is extreme patience um, when it comes to, to letting your work rest. Um, but it, so it definitely pays off and it definitely makes a difference to your artwork. Who else is following on on a week by week basis? Um, have you, are you letting it rest for, for the same period of time? Or are you sort of just leaving it 24 hours and then going back in? Uh, everyone's gone quiet in the room. I hope you haven't all jumped over to the Pergamano party and left me. <laughs> Um, okay, sorry, Pat, I didn't see your question. Um, how to measure which one you have. Okay, so let's have a look, looking here. So I have got, I've got the, this is the 1.2. Let me just have a look at X. Let me just check and compare. So I haven't got the the new one just yet. But I think it's to do with I just need to pry. Bear with it, so I haven't disappeared, I'm still here. Okay. They're all watching. Okay. Angela's got itchy fingers. You can get some cream for that, Angela. <laughs> um, right, okay. So I've got the, the 1.2. And that is, I'm just measuring it with my ruler. So the 1.2 is about half a centimeter and the one is just under half a centimeter <coughs> excuse me so what i did i just measured the sizing can be inherited from pergamano so the space the measurement from the outer sides of the tool, okay, is for the largest one is half a centimeter. Okay, for the medium size one, it is 0.4 of a centimeter. And I haven't got the, the new one in because we're just waiting for their, I think they're due in today, I think. Um, so I know that will be even smaller. Okay, so. Back to our free mill. Where did I get to? Here we go. I can definitely see where I, where I stopped mid flow. So I'm just going in. But you can see now how it's definitely starting to, to build up, can't you? Where I've been. I get carried away with this now. Not carried away, I'm sort of enjoying that process. Pat's ready to party. Everyone should be ready to party over on the Pergamano website. Especially with the, the dismal weather outside as well. Okay. Yeah, can you can you see the difference as I'm starting to go around? I mean, you can definitely see a difference from this side compared to this side, can't you? So, um, I keep getting sidetracked by re trying to read the messages as well. So we're just gonna go around, and so what we're doing is we're introducing the next layer. So let me ask some of our friends in the room, how many layers 
would you do? Okay. How many layers of white work? Now I have my thoughts on this, which I will give. But let's see some other thoughts on the matter. Because I'm not an expert. I, I just, I watch the experts and I learn myself. <laughs> Jane, Jane's sitting on the fence. So Susan says four. Jane says as many as it takes. <laughs> that would be my answer Jane but I would have said it slightly differently but the end result is the, is the same as many as it takes now my thoughts on the matter so JC would do between 5 and 8 Angela uh, has only ever done 4 or 5 Karen's done 10. Um, Bernie's never counted, but agrees with Jane. Lynn agrees with Jane. Julie's with Jane. Um, yeah, I know. So my thoughts on that is in line with Jane. Uh, Olivia, five or six. Clive on my last project, seven layers over a week. So my response would be that depending on the line art I've used, whether I've used the number one, the number two, the number three, or the number four. So for example, I may have to do eight to 10 layers on this one because I've got that crisp line to counteract. Whereas on this one, it may be six to eight layers and so the lighter the lines around the outside for me i would go it would take less layers to achieve that that's my thoughts on it anyway but exactly it it's a roundabout way a roundabout weighing it's a roundabout way of saying the same as what jane said as many as it takes <laughs> Great answer. Love that. I suppose it is, isn't it? Depends on the, the size of the area you're working within, the tool that you've traced out with, how white do you want it to be? Do you want sort of like a, a soft white? A, a bright white. Is it not a bright white? I mean, but you know what I mean. So poor Ken is probably down some country lane, pacing backwards and forwards in the wind, trying to um, get a signal. And he's going to miss out on the sneaky peek. I know he loves a good old sneaky peek. That wind is really strong outside. I, can you hear it? Um, Helen's too impatient for loads of layers. I'm totally with you. Um, so for me, this is where, by doing this on Groovy Tuesday, it's one of those processes that you, you have to, don't you? Or for me, I do. So... Um, yeah. Oh, goodness me. I've been waffling too much, haven't I? I have been waffling. So I'm going to do one layer on this one first with the... Okay, so question for everybody in the room. I would say everyone's got to answer, but I can just imagine the noise um, if you was all in the room. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so my question to all my good friends at home or out and about, wherever you are, when I, I've completed this layer, when I come back to the, the stem of the flower, do we want to see what's back in stock or do we want a sneaky peek first? <laughs> Sue, I don't know what the, uh, Sue Carpenter, yes, I don't know what the yes wants. Yes, you want to see, so we've got, a, so it, it's either a sneaky peek or back in stock. I, I'm right, I'm not looking at that, I'm going to look up in a minute and I'll have a look at the, the consensus, but I have a feeling, I know you all so well, <laughs> there's a song there, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear <laughs> I will show you both but it's what you want to what do you want to see first I'm excited about both I really am <laughs> almost there how slow can I go to get to the stalk Hang on, what's Sue telling me? Oh, hang on. My phone doesn't recognise me with my glasses on. What? I'll take my glasses off. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Sue is saying nobody wants to see anything. <laughs> you just want to carry on with your white work. Okay. I can just hear Sue <laughs> laughing downstairs. <laughs> she didn't really um she said that the overall consensus which i knew it would be would be the sneaky peek so i'm going to be mean i'm going to be re i'm going to be a mean paul and um i'm going to show you the back in stock first can you hear that noise? Hang on, let me bring the oh, turn on my head. Where is it? It's like a oh, that's a terrible shot. I'm trying to get the microphone closer. Um, when I was coming around to this one on my first couple of layers, I went in too heavy. So what it's doing, the parchment can see how it's buckling slightly. Okay. So I'm not really um, delaying. I am. I am. Okay. Almost there. Oh no, oh, hang on. I'll go up a bit further on this one. Because you're distracting me. <gasps> oh, Jane's got rain. Keep it up there, Jane. Don't want any rain down here. Right. Okay. Now that I'm on the smaller ball tool, this is a, a free mill. I can get into those areas as well, which I couldn't really get into with the um, the larger wall tools. So let's have a look. Oh, goodness me. You can see the difference, can't you? Wow. I Even I'm impressed with that. Even Sue's always on the ball, ball tall. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, let's do the sneaky peek then. Right, let me just. I'm gonna just pop that down there so I can get the 
the perspective on the overhead. So where are we now? Where are we now? Oh, I know. Well, I, I think I know where I am. Um, I'm in Eden Bridge. I'm in Kent, and it's a Tuesday. Groovy Tuesday is always a good reminder of the day of the week. <laughs> okay, so let's pop that to one side. Look at that! I'm really impressed with that. Doesn't that? Wow! That's even surprised me. <laughs> Goodness, see a little bit of patience. That definitely pays off, doesn't it? Wow. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So, currently got the Pergamano party going on. 30% across the website and up to 75%, <coughs> excuse me, on certain items. And then this Thursday, would normally be, well, wouldn't know it. This Thursday, the Pergamano show on Crate and Craft, which is at 11 and 3. And somebody dropped out of um, a headliner on TV, which is a, a new name for a new and exclusive. So um, they asked if we could help out. So I'm actually doing three hours on Thursday, 8 a.m., 12 p.m., and 4 p.m., okay? And if you tuned in on Sunday to watch Barbara with the lovely geisha and you had the lovely floral sprays on there as well, the Chinese lanterns, what else is on that? The Enzos and all that, that lovely sort of oriental theme design. But the, the flowers um, could be used obviously throughout the year because they're flowers. Okay. So on... Thursday, I'm going on with the groovy version of the floral sprays. So some of our friends at home may already be familiar with the designs. So we've got Barb's Chinese Lantern. These are A6 plates. The ginkgo that you drew together in the shack. Then we now have the new star flower. So the star flower was a design that Barb drew for the summer retreat and it was released in stamp form last year. And now we have it in an A6 groovy plate. And it also comes with a spacer, which I'll show you in a bit. The daffodil, designed by Tina, the floral spray. Then we've got the meadow flowers. We've got the lovely poppies, the wildflowers. And then there were two embellishment plates that were designed to work with so this one was designed to work with the floral spray and this one was designed to work with the chinese lantern so you've got the reeds the dragonflies and the way in which they were designed were so for example i could take this plate draw out the stems and replace the flower heads with the butterflies okay that's the way that they were designed to work and it was the same for let me just pop that one back in so I don't lose it and it was the same for the Chinese lanterns so you take the Chinese lanterns and the flower heads are replaced by the dragonflies okay but beautiful designs in their own right so let me just pop that back. I know, sorry, I'm backwards and forwards, but if I don't put it back, I'm going to lose it. So Starflower is a new one. And then we have the lovely spacer plate. So if you've, you're working with the starter kit, then you've got where flowers bloom, so does hope. Then you've got the dragonfly spacer. You have the butterfly spacer that goes with the floral spray. And we have a new one called Flowers Are Like Friends, They Bring Colour to Your World. So this is a new spacer that will accompany the lovely star flower. Okay, and then also on the show, we've got the Japanese symbols and the butterfly spacer as well. And I thought I would also bring into play the, the lovely geisha and the water house as well. Love this geisha. Um, is one of my all-time favourite designs from Clarity. 
And if you go to, let me just bring it up. Hang on. Bear with, bear with. Sorry for the black. So let me bring in a piece of artwork. And there's a sneaky peek of a piece of artwork that was created by Lovely Jane. Okay, so if I, let me go to the Clarity website. Okay, so if I bring in the, the Clarity website. So if you go to As Seen on TV, okay, and you scroll down. So you have the, the lovely As Seen on TV, the recent editions. So if I go into the Geisha, underneath there is lots and lots of artwork. Let's click on that one. And as you click on, the image changes. And if you've got um, an iPhone, like a tablet, where you can increase the size, then you can have a look at it in a bit more detail. So you can see it just goes on and on and on and on. And then if I go back, and let's go to the Geisha. So it's the same. We've got some lovely artwork under there as well. Um, so it's not showing on the schedule yet for Quentin Craft for an hour off. So it's 8, 12, and 4. Sometimes it takes a little bit of a, a delay to come through. So let's have a look at some inspiration of the new star flower from the design team. So this is a piece created by Jane using that lovely little spacer plate. That's lovely, really. Lovely. And Jane's actually pico cut and layered those up. Then we've got a piece from Julie Campbell. Love the colors on that one. One from Karen Jackson, quite regal. I mean, we have to send cards at certain times of throughout the year. That is just sort of, for me, is a lovely um, sympathy card, thinking of you. Then we have uh, another piece by Jane, thinking outside the box, coming in from the different sides, using a lovely um, rainbow parchment. Then we've got a piece by Hazel, and this is nice. This is from Jill. Sort of. So this is using the easy layout groovy plates from Linda. Then this one. This is a, a me and Jane plate. This is this is pattern building. So this is from Hazel. Then this is. I thought this one was Josie because we've got Josie's lovely circular grids around the outside. Um, and that one's from Julie. And then this one is lovely. This is just using the little border. So this one is from um, Karen Jackson. So we've got Jane's frame around the outside, different color parchment, and just using that lovely border as a, as a, as a, a frame filler. Clever, isn't it? So that's just a sneaky peek of some of the artwork coming up on Thursday. Then obviously on Thursday evening, you're in the shack at seven o'clock with Barb and continuing on with F for fabulous fashion. Then on Sunday, um, this is an infill show. So I'm doing three o'clock and seven o'clock on Sunday evening. So I hope you can join me because it's felt by clarity. And I'm going to be putting our lovely dyes through their paces using that fantastic range of self-adhesive felt. So, so that's what's coming up this week. Now, do you want to see what's back in stock? We waited ages and ages and ages and ages for these. And some of these are, I'm going to bring them, oh, you've probably got a sneaky peek of those. Let me just bring them in. Okay. So these are our lovely corner punches. And these two have been out of stock for mega, mega time. I can't think of a word. <laughs> so we've got number one, number two, number three, number four, 
number five. And we were just on the verge of, I had like a handful of those ones left. So these are great for your parchment craft. And these are great for your general paper craft. So sort of like photo corners. Um, and this one, the, the team downstairs, they always call this one the Batman one because it looks like the silhouette of Batman. So what do they look like when you punch them out? So this is the, the number one, which to me is sort of like a, a traditional style of um, photo corner. Okay, so the idea is, should you use paper rather than card, is that you, you part, I'm going to go through this on, um, actually I might just do it now, to show it how it works, and then I'm going to do it on TV as well. So you've got that lovely design there, and what happens is that that slots inside for it to hold. So if you're doing wedding invites or par party invites, Bergamano party, then you can use those to attach maybe the RSVP. So that's number one. Then number two is this one. Now, I don't know if you'll notice, but there isn't, you can see there's a different thickness of border around the outside, okay? And they vary from corner to corner. Then we have, I think this was one of Glynis's favorite ones. This one, she'll be well chuffed that that one's back in stock. So that's number three. Then we've got number four. And then finally, we have number five. Okay. So let me show you how they work because they're not just corner punches. Okay. So what I'm going to do, let me grab... Okay, I'm going to go for this one. I'm going to go for Glynis's favourite. Okay, let's pop that to one side. I'm going to bring a white piece of paper in because what I'm going to do to start off with is I need, this is my back. Okay, so this is going to be, the, so I'm using black card. So what you do first, you can see it's got a lovely sort of wing shape to it. Okay, so you take your card or your, paper, whichever you want to, and you push into the corner so that there's no movement. If I hold it like, can you see it? It's moved away. So don't, what you do is you literally push straight into that corner. And while that's in place, ready for the crunch, listen to that crunch. Okay. So now look, you've got a lovely decorative corner okay so you're not restricted the only restrictions you have is the size of paper or artwork you're doing so you could use it for any size whatsoever so say for example this is my piece of artwork now it's entirely up to you but my suggestion would be if this was my parchment artwork okay so this was this one here that we're working on and I wanted to use the photo corners to attach it. I would take a piece of copy paper the same size as the piece I want to mount. Okay, so what you do is you pop that in there, like so. And can you see it's a very thin border? Okay, and the best way of doing this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in, I don't want to cut onto my large mat. I have a one of our A4 black mats, and I use this just for cutting on. Okay, because if you're if you've got your black mat, okay, I've got one for cutting and one for coloring, because if you cut into it and then you're coloring on card or on paper, when you're coloring in, it can pick up the texture of your mat. So I always have one just for cutting. Okay, also in the Pergamano cell. The same, if you want to replace your existing one. Then I'm going to take our Pergamano ruler that has, and this was one of the, the best ideas, of, well, not best. This is one of the brilliant ideas 
that Barb came up with. Okay. So it's called Groovy Grip and it's non-stick, it's like a vinyl. And what we're going to do now is I definitely need my glasses for this. So, Sue, if you're, I'm going to ask this question, I know the answer. So the punches are back in stock on both the Clarity website and the Pergamono website. If you go to the Clarity website, they're $7.99 plus club discount. If you go to the Pergamano website, they're 30% off. And I think that's about £5.40 or £5.39 or something. So, um, yeah, Sue said definitely cheaper on the Pergamano website. So um, if you've been waiting for these punches, or even if you haven't been waiting the first time you've seen them, then go and celebrate the party. It's like the Smurf window stickers you used to get with fuel. Oh yeah, yeah, I had loads of those. I had the little characters as well. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm ha this is the steel edge part of the ruler along here. Okay, and so if I was to line this up over the top like so, okay, it just happens by coincidence that the border I need is this, this little border here is the same thickness as the metal inlay on the ruler. Spooky, I know. Okay. So I'm going to turn my ruler to this side. And what I'm doing, I'm using the grid lines to line up my piece of artwork to make sure that it's straight. Okay. Let's make sure the, the paper's straight first, or your, my piece of artwork, like so. That's nice and straight. That comes in over there. Okay, that's like that. And then I'm going to take a craft knife. Okay, now there's no rules to say that you have to cut your card or paper with one pass of a craft knife. Okay, so what I'm going to do is keep going over it. You know how we were talking about using the, the groovy tool if you haven't got the pressure in your hand? Okay, it's the same thing. You can go very light, it'll take longer, obviously. Um, the other option is to use a paper trimmer. So I would sort of mark it and then get a sort of a do it by eye. So then that one is going to go like so. So if, for example, you're going to be doing a lot of toppers this particular size, okay, what you can do is create a template so you know that you could cut your background to size and that you haven't got to, so you could have like a stash of um, backgrounds pieces that you can just jump to every single time. Okay, went a bit wonky there. So now I'm going to go back to my, which one are we Where's my punch? There's my punch gone. So we're going to push into the corner, crunch, turn it round, crunch, turn it round, and crunch. Moment of truth. I would have to use really thick card, wouldn't I? <laughs> so your parchment wouldn't be as rigid as this stencil card that I'm using. But I just thought it was a, a great way of the, just the black on the white. So now I have my parchment carefully attached. Okay. If it buckles slightly, then just take this out and just trim it down a sliver. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, and I know we get many questions. Okay, because obviously there's no debris on the table, is there? All of the waste is stored in the little bin underneath. Okay, so what you do is you hold it so that the arrow is pointing away. You see that little arrow there? 
and it's like nodular. And what you do is you take your thumb, press down, and it slides out. Okay, and then all of your waste is stored in there. Okay, so now you can see how that looks. Okay, but this is how you can then turn that corner into a border. So, for example, if I take a white piece of card, I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to punch. Okay, empty the bin. Then I'm moving, so that's where it was there. So I'm now going over. And what I, I want to do, see the, the point here and the point on there, I want to sort of match those up. Put my glasses on. Okay. So that goes like so. Punch cast, slide along. Like that. So what I tend to do is create like a template. Okay, so depending on the, the size of card. Now I find it I was going from the middle outwards middle-ish, but then I find it hard going from there to my left. So all I'm going to do is turn it over and go that way. Okay. So now we have a lovely decorative border. So you could create a lovely border and then just cut it to size, but it's also a lovely way of attaching your work as well, because what you could do, this could go underneath. So it could also act as like a pocket as well. So you glue down there. And you can do that with all of that. I mean, obviously the, the straight one is just gonna give you a straight line. The number two will give you that lovely sort of curved effect. Okay, and then obviously I'll show these on TV on Thursday as well. So, but so a corner punch then becomes a border punch. Okay, and because they've only just come back in stock, I'm going to have a play with them today and tomorrow whilst prepping for the TV shows. So we've got some lovely little bits of, so we can do like a demo on them. But you can see how easy it is to do. And it gives a lovely finish to your artwork. Okay, so that I thought was definitely worth showing you today. Because say they've taken ages and ages and ages to um, come and stop. And I know say many of our friends at home um, struggle to get the back off or the bottom off. So all you do is then if I just pop this one back in and it clicks, you see? So, so you press down. So it's always best to have it facing you. Press down and away. And then when you come to reposition it, if you, I don't know if you can see, let's have a look. There's like two little slots either side. And there's nodular parts that sort of stick out, see that? So what you do is you line that up like so. That goes back in, clunk, click. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. And then it's good to go again. And you'll get different bits of waste depending on the, the design. So I mean, if you're that way inclined, you could use the waste. Oh look, it looks like a rain cloud. <laughs> That's quite, um, there we go, look, there's that cloud. It looks like the, the weather sign, doesn't it? It's raining. It's raining. Where's Mo? Mo, what can you see, see there? <laughs> see now, all I can see now. Uh, 
Uh, where we going? Hang on. There we go. That's my drawing skill. A smile. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can use that. And you can use, I mean, uh, the board, you just have to play around. Um, so you can sort of see, I mean, I, I will sort of create some templates and stuff like that just on copy paper don't go to your card stock just take some copy paper and just play and then what you can do so for example i, I know it's if i take that one into the corner first like so okay and then take the, the base off and then let's have a look so i'm i'm sort of Mm, what am I doing? I'm I haven't pushed it all the way in. This might look rubbish. See, because when I, I do a straight line, I'm going straight up against the back, whereas this one I'm sort of doing it by eye, so I don't know if it's going on straight. Mm, not bad. Um but what you could do you could have this on there, see? I mean, you wouldn't pop that onto there, that's a bit of a, a waste, but you can see how you can create a frame as well. So you could do a complete square, not just a, I could go, I could do probably a whole hour just on punches. See, because if you then chop that off, like so. So let's just do that. Do that. So now you've got a lovely decorative edge down the edge of your cards as well. So you would you could attach that. So say this is your card blank. So you can pop that down the edge, you have it overlapping. There's hours and hours of play just on the punches. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed today's session. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm sure the weather made a difference, making you stay indoors. Um, Jean can see a flying saucer over my face. Flying saucer. Oh, over my face on here. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm looking at yeah, look, there's, oh, look, he looks angry now. And there's the flying saucer. He's being invaded. Um, so don't forget Thursday create and craft 8 o'clock 12 o'clock and 4 o'clock Thursday evening back in the shack with Barb at 7 p.m and Gracie um, fabulous fashion then obviously you've got Barbara's blog throughout the week and then on Saturday and Sunday you've got the Clarity Matters blog then on Sunday 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock felt by Clarity and don't forget the Pergamano party, and if you spend a certain amount, you get a freebie or two. So thank you, as always, to Sue for all her help. The lovely design team, as always, in the room helping out. Lovely to have their company, as always. And I will see you next week for another episode of Groovy Tuesday. Take care, everybody. Stay indoors. Don't go outside. That wind is absolutely howling. So... Take care now.